Hello ladies and gentlemen, I'm the film attorney and my client has a case. Taco, bitch. Indie film legend Kevin Smith, creator of the 90s stoner duo Jay and Silent Bob, has taken a rather strange turn in his more recent films. In phase one of Smith's career, his movies were a mix between buddy films and romantic comedies. Like Tarantino and Rodriguez, Kevin Smith movies all inhabit the same universe, taking place in the same town, referencing the same characters, and of course, all feature Jay and Silent Bob. All of those films did well, with the exception of Mallrats, which bombed right out of the gate, but it's kind of a beloved cult hit now, so you can really say that all five of those movies did very well. Then there's Phase 2 Kevin Smith, Hollywood Kevin Smith. Smith, Sands, Jay, and Silent Bob, the Smiths attempt to make a cute father-daughter comedy in the vein of John Hughes films. Bombed very hard, which is kind of unfair because Jersey Girl was a really cute movie. So, of course, he dips back into the well and brings us Clerks 2, and everyone's happy again. Then, of course, he attempted a Judd Apatow movie, Zack and Mary Make a Porno. Critically ill-fated, but tragic, because it's hilarious. It's one of his best films. And then, of course, we get the Kevin Smith Lethal Weapon buddy cop movie, Cop Out, which might have been pretty good if Bruce Willis hadn't been a frickin' butt all the way through filming. Willis's lack of effort is so noticeable in the final product that it tanks the whole movie. So, in Phase 2 Kevin Smith, you got one that scored high as a big hit, two that got screwed, and then one that was legitimately bad. Now we're in Phase 3 Kevin Smith, where now he's returned to being an indie filmmaker again. And he's starting to make some very interesting choices. For one, he makes horror movies now. Which is kind of weird. Most directors do that in the other direction. They start with horror films and then work their way to doing romantic comedies and action films and other such nonsense. Kevin Smith seems to be doing it backwards. Starting very strongly with Red State, a film where Kevin Smith parodies the Westboro Baptist Church. It's a crazy, bloody mess and it's fairly unpredictable. Add a spectacular performance by the late Michael Parks. Praise his name. And you've just got a great movie. I absolutely hated Red State. I hate Red State. It, this gets me to the second film in Phase 3 of Kevin Smith, Tusk. To give a brief synopsis of the plot, a podcaster goes to Canada to interview a man who claims to have interesting stories to share. After a hot cup of Cosby, he wakes up to find himself turned into a makeshift walrus. Based off a crazy want ad that Kevin Smith stumbled across, where a man offered free housing to anyone willing to dress up like a walrus for two hours a day. This was a problem I had with Red State. It's a problem I had with this. You do not have any character that you fucking like and that you fucking care about. Well, if the characters in this movie were likable, he'd just be going to Canada to listen to some old man tell stories. Nobody wants to watch that. Tuesdays with Walrus. Fuck that. Well, I, sad truth is, most people ain't that likable anyway, especially in the world of radio and internet broadcasting. It, it, hateability is like their number one quality. And look, I, I hate Jink Uger, but if he ended up being the centerpiece of a human centipede between Steven Crowder and Alex Jones, I, I'd say it was more than any of the three could possibly deserve. Because their podcast, first off, this is how great the writing is for Kevin Smith nowadays. The podcast is Nazi Party, as in N-O-T-S-E-E. <laughs> you get it? It's Nazi party, but it's spelled N-O-T-S-E. -E. As, as dumb and unlikable as these guys are, it isn't inaccurate to what most internet podcasters actually are. Bullies with microphones who are trying to be comedians even though they're not really funny. And we've seen Kevin Smith write jerks and it'd be absolutely hilarious. What might be so off-putting about these guys is that you know Kevin Smith can make these characters a hundred times funnier than they are. But they're not supposed to be funny. They're supposed to be hacks. And there's nothing that bombs harder than guys trying to do mean comedy and they're not that funny. You want a rant from the Beast? The Beast? 
Wait, wait, TJ. You'll you'll learn a thing or two. The Beast. You might learn a thing or two. The Beast, and then... TJ. And he's not even a good podcaster. He goes up to talk to this old man or this this cripple guy, and he doesn't even bring a microphone. He doesn't even capture the stories live. He wants to tell them secondhand. He he has radio gold with this crazy old man right here. And once again, b brings no microphone. That's he already he has terrible instincts as a podcaster. And what they do as a podcast they laugh at videos where people hurt themselves. Like, they make fun of this guy where this video got published without his consent. This video got published where he was, he had the sword and he was swinging around and he accidentally cuts his leg off. And Justin Long and Haley Joel Osment, they're laughing their asses off, making fun of a guy who accidentally cut his leg off. And movies are about people paying for their sins. In the old days, this meant smoking dope and having premarital sex, but we don't really register those things as that sinful anymore. Morality has kind of changed. Wallace publicly humiliates this kid and others on his podcast with zero concern for the repercussions, even when he's confronted with them. Fucking Kill Bill kid fucking killed himself, sir, with his own fucking sword. You believe that shit? I'm not fucking kidding you. I'm gonna hold out for two more days, selfish little peg like piece of shit. See, Wallace has made his fortune mocking the unfortunate. Now, as it turns out, he's a thing to be mocked on some terrible podcast. Walrus. Walrus. No, TJ, TJ, dude, dude, seriously. That's a walrus. Walrus. I can understand that type of thinking, perhaps, but I think it would work better if you actually gave a shit about the guy. Why do you want to see a likable person get put through this? I mean, why, why do you want to fall in love with a character and then watch him be tortured to death this way? It, it, it works better that he's a jerk. It softens the blow. Likable characters are great if he's meant to triumph over the situation or if they're one likable character in a mixed bag. Uh, for instance, uh, I don't like it when Sheila dies in Nightmare on Elm Street 4. But it's an important scene because by this point, you're kind of rooting for Freddy. It, Sheila's death pulls you back. When Freddy kills his sweet little girl, it does remind you, wait a minute, Freddy's a jerk. I, I shouldn't root for him. And I can handle that for this movie, but I, I wouldn't want to watch the, her get put through this horrible nonsense. It, 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 it would just be depressing. You can really screw up a movie by having a character you like way too much get killed. But when they show the video of the guy doing it, when he cuts his leg off, it's horrendous fucking CGI blood and shit. It looks so fucking fake. Sorry about that. You know, I myself just have a harder time believing that he was able to cut his leg off with this flimsy little sword. I mean, what is that, a chain sword? But you have to remember... He's also, this is an indie film, and it's being done on an indie film budget, so there's a bit of a trade-off. Look, you can have a second and a half of bad CGI, you get 45 minutes worth of this amazing practical effect right here. But I mean, look, if, if you'll ignore seeing a visible puppeteer in Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles... Then you can ignore this one bad special effect to enjoy what amounts to an entire movie worth of good one. And he even gives this flashback that, oh, I think I might have met the guy before. And Michael Parks, in this flashback, literally talks like this. Hey, Lou, how you doing? You think I would do to you, Spire? Alright, this is a pretty fair criticism. But also... You gotta remember, every time we see this guy, he has a different persona. When Wallace first meets him, he's in a wheelchair. But once Wallace can't walk anymore, we find out that's not true. And this is merely his get rid of the cops character. Oh. Good afternoon, Peter. I am Guy Lapointe, Sûreté du Québec. Oh, did you come here by the spider? No. Hmm? Uh, I called the police two days ago because there's a big old spider in my body hole. Because no investigator, no, nobody in the world wants to try to have a conversation with a person who talks like this. You want to end this as quickly as possible. It's awkward, it's uncomfortable, and it, it's ultimately going to get you nowhere. It's also a brilliant ruse if you happen to be turning people into walruses. 
See, the good part and bad part of Tusk happen to be one and the same. See, if you heard the Smodcast episode, Walrus and the Carpenter, then you heard Kevin Smith and Scott Moser work out this entire plot right in front of you in real time. So when it came time to seeing the movie, nothing that happened surprised you. I mean, they, they pretty much map it out all the way down to the end. I just have to have one of the Walrus fights <laughs> like on the beach. <laughs> We just slam each other, like, arr, arr, arr. <laughs> and you start like we start saying, "Is man indeed a walrus at heart?" <laughs> so what's good about that? Well, Kevin Smith was pretty much done making movies. He didn't want to deal with the Hollywood machine anymore. He was just out. He was done, and he felt he was out of fresh ideas. And then he found this weird article that inspired him to make this goofy movie. You're not just watching uh, a man turn another man into a walrus. You're, you're seeing a filmmaker get his inspiration back. And yeah, what he's making is weird, but it, there's some things... Like, look, Clerks 3 is something we want to see, something the fans want to see. But it just ain't on the table. Because the Weinsteins apparently don't like to pay up. Allegedly. So maybe we'll get it one day, but it's, let's just consider it not happening. But Tusk, when he read that article and got the spark of inspiration to make this goofy movie, it and let us watch every step of the way, from him and Mosier working it out, to the crowdsourcing, to the final product, behind the scenes, all that stuff. He let us be part of it. It's more than a movie about a man turning another man into a walrus. It's about a filmmaker rediscovering his love of making films and telling stories. Even though now the stories are a little weird. Sorry, Booth. I'm the film attorney, and for now, the defense rests.